this is uh, somewhere different. Wait, where am I? Well, I'm actually in my storage room right now, home to things that I have and have not covered yet. So my lighting and audio aren't going to be the best right now. But I thought it'd be fun to do an update video about this. Some of you may remember already, but for those who are new or do not, I run an Apple XServe at home for use as a render farm for my videos. Now, up until a couple of days ago, it's actually just been sitting on a shelf, but I just recently got a new rack and I'm able to give it a proper home. Now, I've spent the last couple of days getting everything set up in here just right, the way I want it, and it's nearly done. I just have one more thing I want to put in there, but I have to do a little bit of work on it first. But for now, let's take a look at what I've got in there. On the bottom down here, we have two single CPU XServes, but I don't have any drive trays or memory for them. So those are currently waiting to get decked out. Up next, we have an HP ProLiant DL380G4. I also have a DL360G4, and that'll get put in here at some point. Both of those have the drives, memory, and processors to make them work. Up above that, we have the Apple XServe I have shown in several videos. On top of that, we have a really cool USB PS2 KVM. This allows me to connect a PS2 console and have it work with any USB server, like the uh, Apple XServe here, which doesn't do PS2 at all. Which brings me to the top, a VGA console. So in order to access my server, all I have to do is select the correct device on the KVM and pull the console out. And then I'm into my server. Now I obviously don't need a monitor and keyboard connected to my servers, but it is nice to be able to have. But say you're walking by and it's screaming away at something and you're wondering why the fans are running so loud, you can just run a simple HTOP on it and get an instant reading without needing to pull out your phone or something. Now I've got almost all proper enterprise grade hardware in here, except for one thing, my Switch. And today I'll be remedying that by replacing it with this. This is a Quanta LB4M, a 48 port gigabit switch. Now I actually believe just the RJ45 ports here are gigabit, and I think these are two 10 gigabit ports. I haven't played around with it too much yet. One thing I know about this for sure though, is that it is insanely loud. Can you even hear me right now? All right, so after a little bit, it actually settles down into this idle mode, which is still pretty loud. Now, from the research I've done, this thing should have a web GUI that would allow me to adjust the speed of the fans. Now, I don't know if they go lower uh, than this, but I definitely want to find out. Now, this is my first time using a uh, managed switch, so forgive me for any mistakes I make. All right, I've got the switch on and connected to my DHCP server and my desktop. Now, I got this thing used and it came pre-configured with the Telnet service enabled, so I was able to connect to it over the network with that. With that, I was able to figure out how to enable the SSH connection, so I'm able to connect to it with a more native Linux-y type thing. So I can get into it without needing a console cable, but at some point during this, I may need to switch to a console cable, which is going to suck because I don't have one and I'll have to make it. But for now, I can simply SSH into this, which thankfully the previous owner did not change this from the default password of no password, so I can get in. From here, I need to enable the advanced options, and from here I can show you what I figured out is the actual problem with the web GUI on this and why I can't get to it. So if I do show version, we can see that this switch is configured with VXWorks 6.6. Now, when I first got this thing, I had no idea what that meant. Uh, so I've had to research everything here. And I'm now at the point where I have determined, based on other people's research, that VXWorks 6.6 .6 really doesn't belong on this thing because it assumes there are more ports than there are and the web GUI doesn't work and it's, it's kind of weird. So that needs to go away. So that means I have to put a new firmware on here. Yay! Well, internet to the rescue, I have uh, also figured out how to do that. 
So I have a really convenient little guide here that shows you how to transfer files over to it. And it actually came with all of the firmware images I could really ever possibly want. So I've set up a TFTP server like it requires, and I've moved the bin file, you can actually see my log there, into the TFTP host dir. So now I can try and get that copied over. So what I can do here is to verify the uh, boot images that are on here. I can do show boot var. And we can see we are using 1.1.0.8, which comes with VXWorks 6.6. .6. So we're going to have to roll back to a previous version to get rid of the uh, new incompatible VXWorks. Now, uh, interestingly, I did this, show ports all, and this looks about right. I'm connected to ports 2 and 4, so yeah, being a gigabit there makes sense. So if I go down, I can see these two ports here, which do appear to be 10 gig, because this is a 48 port switch, and these are 49 and 50. So yes, those are 10 gig ports, and they call it a 10 gig switch because of those ports. But we can also see we have all these other ports down here, and I'm not really sure what the deal is with those. Those may be something to do with virtual LAN. I'm not sure, because I'm, again, not a network administrator. So I, I don't know. What I'm going to do is, uh, again, show boot var. And we can see that our backup is actually the same as our active. So what we're going to do is flash our backup. So first off, I need my IP address for here, 1.26. So we're going to do copy, 2.168.1.26. Then the name of the file was this. Invalid URL specified, maybe, oh yeah. Okay, let's see how this goes. Um, all right. Ah, oh, why does everyone say you gotta use TFTP? It supports everything. Jeez, could have just done SFTP. Everywhere on the internet shows you just TFTP. Man, I'm half tempted to do it again with SFTP just to prove a point. Or even SCP. God, that's even more convenient. Okay, let's see. Show boot var. Hey, I'm liking that. Okay, so now we need to switch and actually boot that one. So we're going to do boot system backup, show boot var, and that's going to change it. So let's go and do that. Boot system backup. Alrighty, show boot var. All right, next we will do that. All right, so the next step we're going to do is reload, which is going to restart the switch, and then it's going to unpack the uh, firmware and boot that. Now we're not gonna see this because I'm not connected to the console port. So I just have to hope that all goes smoothly. And then I'll, I should theoretically be able to connect to the web interface after this. So. Uh, Hopefully this goes correctly and it doesn't get bricked or something. <laughs> There's not a whole lot I can do. All right, my network's down. Well, we'll see what happens. Okay. Well, we have a connection. All righty. Let's see what happens. Aha! I am connected. Okay. See if I can get to the web interface. I can indeed. Sweet. Oh, yeah. Now we're talking. Okay. Uh, system. Oh, I swear there was a way of doing this. Let me see here. Fan speed. Fan duty level is at 45%. Max. Let's go. Uh, oh, temperature range. Oh, yeah. I don't. Duty levels are at 47%. So I think I read. You can knock that down to 35%. I'm not sure how you do that here. Well, after looking around some, it seems like there isn't really a way of uh, just getting the fans to settle down. So, uh, yeah, all this was for naught, except, well, now it just seems like it's working better overall. We can see that this LED is now doing something, not just that one. So, uh, 
Something changed, probably for the better. All right, now the time has come to remove the uh, old TP-Link switch. So I can get this out of here. And now I can put in my big boy. I didn't get this with the uh, ears, so I don't get it mounted on the racks. I'll probably get a shelf that can go across and put it on there properly. But uh, yeah, until then, it's just going to be uh, loose. All right, got it fired up. Let's get stuff connected. Yeah, I may not be utilizing this thing to its uh, fullest potential here, but um, it, it's fun. So, yeah. Well, that pretty much covers everything I wanted to talk about with the uh, new server rack I got set up. Yeah, this really uh, killed my last couple of days here, so uh, I'm going to be getting back on track for videos. I just uh, keep doing hard one after hard one. And, uh, yeah, this server I may utilize in the future on the channel, because it's, it's not a bad server, and it's just it's a bit old. It's about 2004, so it's, it's not super fast, but uh, it's pretty fun. It's got some... Oh, it needs some love here. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think this could make for a fun test server to uh, just play around with doing stuff on the channel. So, probably going to be seeing more of that in the future. But for now, I think that's everything. I'll see you later.